Welcome back to the Great Minnesota Recipe. The competition is finally here. I hope you're as hungry as I am because it's time to watch our cooks. Tomorrow, Susie and Anusha and Kanan create their new exciting take on the most classic Minnesota entree, the hot dish. Now you might be wondering how we're leveling the playing field for tomorrow and Susie. We've given them each the option to bring a sous chef and you'll get to meet them in just a bit. But before we get to the cooking, let's take a look back at all the meals we've tasted so far. You can be doing something your whole life and you're like, oh, this is cool, this is what I do. And then you fall into something that you actually love and it's a different feeling. My name is Tamara Tanksley. I'm the executive chef here at the Black Boy Restaurant in Vergas, Minnesota. Um, I've been here 13 years. Um, went to culinary school in Moorhead, um, Minnesota. And um, been cooking for the last 13 years, fell in love with it here in the state, and um, yeah, and it's been, uh, I've been off and running ever since. My name is Susie Sackerman, and I am 50 years old. I'm from Buell, Minnesota, right here. The Italian culture, or where, when I grew up, it, 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 it was like extremely affectionate. All the strongest influences in my cooking were strong women. We are very excited about sharing our recipes and about talking about our culture, about our home and everything. Both me and Anusha grew up in large urban cities and we never had the chance to like literally grow our own food. Take a spoonful of it or a ladle full of it and just go straight out in the center and just drop it right there. Funding for the Great Minnesota Recipe is provided by Doherty Appliance Sales and Service, the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. I think it's time for a competition, don't you? But I can't do it without my friend Sharon. Well, I've had a wonderful time meeting all these cooks and tasting their amazing dishes. You oh. ready to meet these chefs? Let's do it. All right. Come on in, cooks. Come on in. Good to see you. Good to see you. Love to see you. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Are you ready to meet the judges? From Dream of Wild Health and the Indigenous Food Network, Kateri Tuttle. Tama taki api, yushki awan chi an kapi ye, chante wash de an ape chi uzapi he, Kateri Sunshine Tuttle amaki api, tama kota ye, imanija skahi matahan, isayati ed omawapi. Hello, my relatives. Um, it's great to see you all. I greet you all with a warm heart and a handshake. My name is Kateri Sunshine Tuttle. I am Dakota from St. Paul, and I am enrolled at Santee in Nebraska. I'm also a program coordinator at Dream of Wild Health, and I am a person that works very closely with the Indigenous Food Network at Dream of Wild Health as well. Hometown hero and Olympic curling gold medalist, John Schuster. I'm John Schuster. I'm a five-time Olympic curler and the skip of the team that won the gold for the United States in the 2018 Olympics. An award-winning author and Guatemalan chef entrepreneur, Amalia moreno Domgard. Hi, I am Amalia moreno Domgard, award-winning author and chef entrepreneur. You'll have 90 minutes to create a hot dish inspired by your cultural background. This must include a protein, a vegetable, and some sort of sauce or soup to bind it all together. You've got everything you need to make a winning recipe. So let's get started. On your marks. Get set. Go! go. making a Cajun inspired wild rice hot dish. It's gonna have a little bit of my gumbo flavors in there, but it's gonna be definitely Minnesota. So you guys will love it. It'll be a, a real party in your mouth, as they like to say. <laughs> I'm gonna start a roux in that pot. This will be for rendering our bacon. Okay. I'm gonna grab And I'm about to cut your bacon so you can render. Okay, sounds good, honey. My sous chef is my big sister, Tuesday Tanksley. Chef Tanksley. Chef Tuesday, Chef T is what they call her, and um, it's the best. I get to boss my sister around. I am making, it's called We Love Pierogi Hot Dish. And I was thinking about something that my godmother Tona made that I loved so much. And so I, the hot dish is inspired from Tona's pierogies. Have you ever made homemade pasta? No. Really? Mm -hmm. That's why I was asking you how long you Yeah, it's really <laughs> easy. 
Um, and it doesn't matter that some gets on the board because we're going to be using the board. Um, to roll it out, me? Yeah. My sous chef is a childhood friend. We have known each other from first through, we went to school first through 12th grade, but we've known each other our whole lives. And he's just, he's just the sweetest, most wonderful friend and a great guy. And he lives close to the area. And when he said he would love to help me out, I was so ecstatic because he's just, he, he, I think he brings me a little, a little calmness because he's, he's so laid back and just wonderful. Uh, I'm really excited because we have been trying out various modifications of this recipe over the last, uh, what, two, three weeks now yeah. and really looking forward to seeing what others think of it. Yeah, we have been trying out a lot of uh, Indian flavoring on the traditional uh, tater tot hot dish. We have been giving to friends and uh, making them try things and we are really indebted to them yeah. for uh, patiently trying out stuffs and giving us feedback and everything and we are really looking forward to it. Right, and I'm sure if it eventually works out good, I'm sure a good amount of credit goes to them for actually trying it out and giving us their critique. Okay, now I gotta see what's happening here because there's a lot of color going on here. It looks delicious already. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. And um, between you and one of the other contestants, I, mean, I don't want to give anything away, yeah. there's a lot of spices involved and I love seeing that. Thank Can you, you tell me a little bit about your dish? Yeah, so we're going to make uh, four, 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 four like layers of the dish. So uh -huh. the bottom base layer is Anusha. She's making the most important layer. And then I'm going to be doing the second and the third. And okay. then um, tater tots, or the Indian variant of it, will go all the way on top. <laughs> yeah. Indian Indian variant of tater tots. That's right. It's called oh my samosas. Gosh, I, samos I love samosas. Yes, that's gonna go on top. Oh my gosh! Are you yeah. making you and make and you're making samosa right from scratch? The whole deal. No, we're gonna use frozen samosas. Okay, okay. Yeah. For time time that's purposes. Right. Yes, yeah. exactly. That makes sense because yeah. I know they are labor intensive. That's right. Yeah. Oh, smell of. Frying onions, I just love that. It just kind of like <laughs> tells you something delicious is on the way. Thank you. Love that. Can you tell when husband and wife are cooking in the kitchen? It's so interesting because usually people have like their the bowls, dynamic. right? Yep. Some are the sous chef, some are the, yep. the the director, right? My husband cooks for me all the time. Does he? So we have a routine. Are you the sous chef or are you the director? <laughs> I am usually the director, but he has learned a lot of techniques sure. um, just by doing. And, yes. Uh, nice uh, dice techniques and uh, even fancy techniques. Right, yeah. right. Well, and of course your utensils are the best. Yeah. The best uh, Absolutely. way to prepare your food. Just, it just, just needs sit. to rest so that all the gluten can get nice and, I don't know, rest it. <laughs> Italians need rest. <laughs> And yeah. just throw a handful of the flour in there. With just a pinch of it? Yeah, that, perfect. One more? One more. Thanks. All right, so tell me a little bit about what's happening here. I noticed you have somebody who's doing all the potato peeling for you. Yes. That right. was my, my job as a kid. Foot. I've got the scars to prove it right here. <laughs> I'm trying so, to stay away from the band-aids. Right, here. right. So, um, What's happening here? What are you doing? Mike is getting the potatoes ready, and okay. I just made a uh, um, batch of homemade pasta dough. Oh, you just whipped that up? Yeah. Awesome. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. And we're getting ready to make the We Love Pierogi Hot Dish. What? Does your mouth water already? Oh, get out. Did you say okay. pierogi? Oh, yeah. You said pierogi? It's carb on carb. Oh, my God. I love pierogi. <laughs> I mean, what else is there? Carb oh, on carb. I love pierogi. <laughs> I was serving pierogi once, and um, I had a gentleman from Eastern Europe say, Pierogi. 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 And he made me repeat it about a hundred times till I got it the way he wanted me to say it. So. And it's like deer. There's no S on the end. Right. <laughs> no, Pierogi. We're just gonna let it rest. Let it rest. Yeah. While we move Have a little on. nap while you get ready. Yes.
I think that's the incredible part of like hot dish, especially, you know, in Minnesota is people, whether they move to our state or from here, uh, is knowing that this, you know, nine by 13 dish that goes in is a one, kind of a one dish meal and taking their own cultural backgrounds and, and trying to make something that would feel at home if you went to a neighborhood, you know, party where it's a lot of people that maybe are born and raised here. Right. Well, and, and then we're limited on the vegetables that we can get, right? Because our winter is so long. So I'm curious to see what vegetables they actually pick out. Um, you know, if they're, they're easy to get in Minnesota. I mean, everything looks so fresh. And the ingredients I'm seeing are not really complicated, you know? I mean, they're, I just wouldn't think of them as a hot dish. So it'll be interesting to see what they come up with. So tell me a little bit about what's, what's happening here. So I'm going to... Um, I'm gonna render some bacon down. Okay. Um, I really just want the fat off of it. The oil from the meat. Is okay. What it's what I'm really after. So the bacon is not actually gonna go in the dish? It might. It's a little bacon bay at the end, maybe. This is what I'm loving over here, the spice. I saw those mm -hmm. uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. I saw those spices and yeah. I nice was like trying to guess what was gonna happen. And, and yeah. So nice can you tell me a little bit about your inspiration? Yeah, so, um, being, being um, Ado, which is a descendant of slaves, we come from all the way from Alabama to Louisiana, right? Right. So we can pull from every every culture there, every culture, Mississippi. And so I, I really, um, I love the Louisiana culture. I love the cuisine. I have cousins there. I have oh, family good eats. there. Good so, eats in Louisiana. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. So um, this is a Cajun-inspired dish. Okay. Um, I do make an amazing gumbo, guys. So it's gonna be. It's kind of based on my gumbo. Okay. But I'm gonna turn it into a Minnesota hot dish. I'm gonna turn. It, I'm gonna use it for my wild rice hot dish. The my kind of like my gumbo process. I'll so say. here's the question. Yes. What's the question? Is there okra involved? There is not, and I'll tell you why. Because okay. I took well when I was um, coming up with the dish. I made my first uh, my first trial run. I had okra, everything, right? Yeah. And I, fa called, I found myself, after, I, after it came out, I wasn't really happy. I said, well, first of all, I had to tell my brain, you're making hot dish, you're not making gumbo. So then I rearranged Got everything, took out ingredients that weren't really Minnesota, Okay. And I'm just going to use the technique of a gumbo with my Minnesota ingredients. And that's really kind of what it is to be yeah. inspired by, yeah. right? Yeah. As to take those little pieces yeah. that, that you love and yeah. bring them in and then, and you know, adapt to where adapt. you are. That's right. right. That's right. So Excellent. I'll put a Cajun spin on some Minnesota ingredients. How Excellent. about that? All right. <laughs> I think choosing the winning hot dish is going to come down to, you know, depth of flavor and and people's creativity with, you know, combining ingredients and uh, something that's going to really pop and stand out uh, from anything maybe I've eaten before. I guess what I'm looking for is just something that might taste a little bit different. Um, I feel like we've seen and gotten to eat a lot of the same hot dishes. I personally love all of the. Uh, the, the staples, but what I'm looking for is something a little bit different that highlights different um, ethnic ingredients. I am looking for overall uh, flavor and uh, texture and how they um, use all the ingredients available to them. Uh, I'm just like, coating the butternut squash and the sweet potato with the ghee which I use, so when it goes in the oven, it just has a coating of oil on it. We are uh, going to make a traditional tater tot hot dish with, a, with an Indian twist. Uh, we are going to uh, making a, uh, we are going to be making a base layer of an Indian uh, inspired sauce, tomato, onion, and chickpea based sauce. And then we are going to top it with what kind of? Paneer which is a type of an Indian cheese. So it's like crumbled cheese and that forms the second layer on top. So this is to saute the, um, saute the onions. And the way I'm doing it is I like to just roast it in dry heat. Well, I think Anusha likes to do it. How do you like to do it, Anja? I like to roast it in ghee or oil. So I just give it a little bit of dry heat just to sort of dehydrate and sweat the onions. That, I feel, gives it a better taste. 
and then we are going to finish it off with an indian a variant of tater tot and that's what is going to go in our hot dish yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i think we are mostly trying to bring the spices and the flavor of indian cooking and trying to incorporate this in this traditional minnesota tater tot hot dish and seeing how it works out like why it's do you it's the sauce it's the tomato sauce that we are making for the dish from the scratch base layer Good. oh i can keep is it already in i can put it in it's hot already okay right? start yeah. putting it in take right. time this is going to go inside the oven now did you enter to put the garlic in oh uh, no i just one part should be good one part <laughs> We're just going to add some garlic and just for enhanced taste. Fingers crossed. <laughs> well, I basically make a homemade pasta dough and then I get this ma the mashed potatoes ready and I make homemade mashed potatoes with Yukon golds and my little special touches like some borscht and herb cheese and make this really nice mashed potato and my godmother always served pierogies she would make pot potato and cheese pierogies and then serve with a side of sauerkraut so i um fold in some really crispy sauerkraut into the cooled mashed potato mixture and some nice um chopped onions sweet onions because when tona would bake the pierogies she would bake it with a lot of butter and onion bake them so the hot dish is layered with homemade pasta like the pierogies on the outside and then the layers are mashed potatoes with onion and butter and then i make a homemade beer cheese sauce i didn't know about your oh, be beer, beer, yeah, beer cheese Mike soup is, is my, a beer that's cheese one of my favorites guy. i am yep. so crazy for it tell me oh, that's good okay so the beauty of this is it's not technically ready until we're ready to build this hot dish. So I go like this, there's no heat, and okay. See, those are in done. about when we're ready to build the hot dish, yep. this is gonna even look better than it does now. And then on the top, I just brush it with a little butter and a little bit more of the cheese sauce. And then when, it, when it's done out of the oven, I plate it with a little pulled pork head of garnish. Because garnish as a meat, you know, meat is a garnish. You know, let's break the rules a little. So the pork and the and the richness of the pierogi hot dish, it's just, to me, it's just quintessential Minnesota. And I can't wait for people to try it. Well, <clears throat> I'm gonna take a little bit of our the Holy Trinity. I'm gonna do some saute and some vegetables. We got some really fun meat, some spicy sausage, some wonderful chicken, our, our famous wild rice, wild rice we, that we all um, love here. Um, I have a beautiful sauce to put with it and um, we're gonna put layer it like Andrew Zimmer, Zimmerman, my, uh, my guy. He says a hot dish is layered. So we will layer, 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 sauce, throw it in the oven. It's gonna be great. Traditionally in um, Cajun cooking, there is a Holy Trinity, and we are definitely putting the Holy Trinity in our hot dish. So the Holy Trinity is considered onions, bell pepper, and celery. So yes, yes on the Holy Trinity, we are doing that. So that's what my sister is shopping up now, and I just need a few of those to see. So just give me like a little yellow, a little green, a little red, uh, celery, and onion, and we'll get those veggies going. I'm gonna turn this back on and I can season right in the pan because we're on a time crunch. Because I'm gonna just grab a little red, guys, because I like the color red. It's very pretty. Put a little red. Oh, it's sizzling. Oh, I just like the colors. Look at those colors. I'm going in for some green, sissy. Going in for some green. And some green. There we go. And we'll let her continue to chop. And I'm gonna actually season this up a little bit, guys. And just don't be afraid to season it. It's Cajun, right? We love a little seasoning in our food. So, and you have to always 
always, always add salt, okay? The salt definitely gets like um, water out of your veggies too. So just a little bit, I didn't put much. Oh, yes, yes. I know cameraman, I know, I know. But just for the audience, I want them to see how pretty that is. It's like yellow and red. And we have our white from our onion. Oh, it just smells good. Oh, it's doing its thing. There we go. Oh, there's the end of that trinity, guys. Awesome. One more celery, or are you no, good? I think this is good. This is a nice amount. So as I get these off nice and sauteed up, guys, um, I'm gonna add just a little Cajun spice to my veg. And um, as I saute these up, um, Tuesday we'll begin to work on our meat. I don't see anything processed. I don't think, I mean, I love this. So I think the, the original idea behind the, the hot dish was exactly that, um, using uh, ingredients uh, that were hardly processed or processed and just combine them with a few ingredients to create a casserole hot dish um, in, a, in a matter of minutes, right? Yes. And, and that constituted the, the main meal and hopefully had a salad right next to it. Right, right. <laughs> Iceberg lettuce, right? <laughs> That's interesting because I grew up in a culture, speaking of fresh ingredients, where going to the supermarket was an afterthought. Having cans available in the, in the house was an afterthought. Why? Because they were more expensive. Exactly. Because ingredients are abundant, fresh ingredients are abundant, and they grow uh, in, in wonderful weather, um, tropical weather. Fruits and vegetables are vine, vine ripened, so they, their flavor is superior, right? And so you don't need um, you know, a lot of canned, canned goods, but because so much grows locally, people go to the markets to buy fresh ingredients and using something canned is, you know, not the, the thing that comes to, to mind as a first thought. Sure. It's, it's an afterthought. Right. I know that cream of mushroom soup is something that is an ingredient that's really well known in wild rice casseroles in Minnesota as well. So whenever we're working in community, we really just try to like impart our ingredients like our wild rice with vinaigrette. Um, so just making sure that people understand that things like um, tradi or, uh, traditional foods like wild rice, it didn't <laughs> come with um, cream of wild rice. Um, when it comes to foods that are introduced to like native people, our indigenous diet was something that was incredibly important to our health. So just making sure that we're working with community to impart these different indigenous ingredients and then teaching them how to cook in like a healthy way um, is incredibly important. Um, traditional people in Minnesota used to use a lot of forage plants. Things like bitter flavors were huge in our diet. Um, so just kind of getting back to forage foods. I see a couple people here using a lot of our leafy greens. Um, we have things in, that grow a lot in Minnesota, things like garlic mustard. It's an invasive plant, but those are things that you can use, and like those are the sort of things that we encourage different chefs that we work with to start using because those are things that have like high iron, they have high like nutritional value, and um, you know people see those things as weeds, but plants, all plants have medicine, and none of our plants are technically weeds in traditional culture. So.
it's just so great to be here to be to be able to cook where we're outside and there's you know uh, there's chickens and ducks and the plants and it, it just the whole ambiance I think is going to make for all of the competition to just be so much more fun. I think we have been given a special honor and it's quite a responsibility we are carrying on our shoulders because we are trying to really put two huge things together. Indian food is a uh, is a uh, uh, entity by itself and then you have this traditional age-old dish that Minnesotans love and we hope we can make good justice by putting them both together. So the greenhouse is going to be quite an exciting, uh, nervous a little bit. Yeah, but we are very excited and uh, we're super happy to be part of it. For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of surreal a little bit. It's like, gosh, I'm doing something that I really love to do and people want me to do it. It's just, it's just crazy. I hope everybody gets to experience this like in life. Just having a passion for something and then having people appreciate your passion and, and want to see you just thrive in it or just, just kind of want to just be a part of it. it, it this, isn't, this isn't work for me. This is just, this is just what I do. This is so fun. I don't even I don't even have words for this. <laughs>
So she's layering our um, hot dish with, um, so we have rice, and that's the andouille sausage and our holy trinity. I'm gonna taste one of those mushrooms, see what it tastes like. Mm, mm, mm. Perfectly seasoned. That's just gonna toss those right in our sauce. Perfect. You can leave, oh, yeah, thank you. I'm just, I just wanna, right, don't splash yourself. So we're just gonna go, just start with that, please. We'll start there. Mm -hmm. Oh, y'all. Just get that rice nice and wet. Beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, so now Tuesday's gonna go in with some chicken, and I'm gonna keep letting our sauce kick in. Go ahead. So what I'm gonna do at this point, guys, I'm gonna get a little cornstarch slurry. It's right here. And I'm going to thicken my sauce with just a little cornstarch just for time's sake. So I feel that my uh, work with indigenous foods at Dream of Wild Health is something that has qualified me to possibly be a judge for this competition today. Um, we work a lot with healthy indigenous foods. We also work with indigenous chefs within the urban Minneapolis community. Um, so just learning more about indigenous foods and cooking in general is something that I'm always interested in. Um, as somebody that cooks for myself, uh, tries to prepare healthy foods, tries to stay healthy, um, it's something that really, really um, is a passion of mine. Well, I love to eat and I am a chef, so this is a natural environment for me. I think I'm qualified to do this based on the fact that, you know, I am from right here in Minnesota, but I have traveled the world and, and our curling team when we're traveling, you know, tries to get local cuisine everywhere we've been. So uh, I've got a pretty good uh, bead on on the cooking scene kind of from around the world and, and to get a chance to see, you know, what we what we have here today. I think I, I've, my palate's now become a little bit more distinguished. Colorful hot dish. Very colorful. You need any of this? Cooks, you have 30 minutes. 30 minutes to garnish. Perfect timing, because 30 minutes is how much time we need for this to bake, okay? So we'll put this in the, this in the oven. And we're going in the oven, okay? Oh, it's creamy, smells delicious, and now it's a cooking. Then a little bit of herbs. Beautifully cut herbs, my friend. And then I just, I'm gonna make little slits so that there's some room for the air okay. to go. Oh, and the, the garnishes. Oh, with layers. Ooh. The cheese, between the cheese and We're the We're ready to go in the it. oven. Oh, going in. Going in. I not only am getting hungry, but I got a taste. Oh, I'm so jealous. I got a little taste over there, and I'm just saying, it was pretty tasty. Was it heavenly? It was, it was really good. Manja, and, manja. And I had, I, had to, I had to confess, I had to confess that I actually don't really care for mashed potatoes, which I know is sacrilege in Minnesota. It is, Everybody's it's a little like, wrong. I know it's Shannon. a little wrong, but you know, today, today, right, but, but today, Susie made it right because those are some mashed potatoes that a person can fall in love with. Mary, take home with you. Nice job, Susie. They're just that good. They were that They're nice that good. Food. So now what I have to do is figure out how to get a sneak a peek from that, or sneak a taste there and sneak a taste there. Right. Yeah. It smells amazing. How's it going, Susie? Good. Awesome. awesome. Yeah, yes. Yeah, we've got some tamarind and dates chutney. Good enough, put in order. This is the thing I can add it up. No, I will, I will do it. Yeah, it should be good. I should be good. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, so it squeezes and gives it a nice layer and a design when you when you just put it on top instead of just dabbing it on. It gives a nice design. We're gonna just um, quickly combine my garnish. I'll just do quickly in this little bowl here. I'm gonna take a few of our breadcrumbs and they're nice and golden. Just chop it. She's chopping. No, nice fine bacon. chop. Ready yep. for these? Can I have a little bit in there? All right. You see this, guys? This is what's gonna top our hot dish. Inspired wild rice hot dish. Tomorrow, can you tell us a little bit more about your dish? Yes, so this is my um, version of a wild rice hot dish. It's inspired from my roots in, in Louisiana, so it's a Cajun inspired mm -hmm. hot dish. Um, and I use my Cajun techniques with a really dark roux and the wonderful spices of the region. And I used um, Minnesota ingredients and I brought it all together for one delicious bite. So the rice is a Minnesota housewife's favorite. It's a canned wild rice. You just get a can opener and you open it. It's a delicious ingredient, right? Because it takes a long time to make wild rice from scratch. And moms need to get hot dish on the table quickly. So of course I use a wonderful uh, canned wild rice. I use for the roux, which is a technique that I learned um, just um, just from that region, darkening your roux, really getting it really dark to give that very distinctive Cajun and flavor taste. and taste. So I hope you guys enjoy it, yeah. I really appreciate the use of wild rice. Yes. We'll see how the can goes. Yeah, um, no. In our community that I come from, we don't really use a lot of canned wild rice, nope. but I am really interested to try awesome. it. So. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, the flavors definitely go to, together very, very well. Get some of that sausage, a little crunch on the top with, what did you guys use on the top here? So for, it's like, just the a, toppings? Toasted panko and a uh, little parsley and uh, America's favorite bacon, <laughs> just to kind of bring it all together. And yeah, toasted as, kale. Toasted, um, crunchy kale, crispy kale on top too. Can you tell us a little bit more about the sausage that you use and maybe the white cream sauce? Sure, so that's a chicken and dewey sausage, which is a, a typical Cajun ingredient, um, very, very popular um, in Louisiana. Um, and the garlic cream sauce is my garlic cream sauce, I added a few Cajun spices to it. Um, just sauce and cream and whole, whole garlic. Yeah, and, and, mushrooms. And, and, and mushrooms, it pairs really well with rice. It's like, a, it soaks it right up. Delicious. Thank you. I detect a little bit of a kick there. Yes, ma'am. Where does that come from? That is the Cajun. <laughs> that is the Cajun. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is delicious. Thank you. And it's definitely a comfort food for Thank me. You. Thank you. Thank you, tomorrow. You're welcome, Sharon. Thank you. Okay, Susie, Mike, come on in. All right. Hi, judges. Hi. Here is my We Love Pierogi hot dish. There you go. Enjoy. Can you tell us a little bit more about your dish? Sure. I, I grew up born and raised in Buell, Minnesota and that's the Iron Range. And um, pierogies were something really incredibly important to me because my godmother, Tona, she made them really, really well. And porchetta is something that we love on the Iron Range. So I decided to garnish the We Love Pierogi hot dish 
with some so local sourced porchetta? So pierogi is, um, they're individual, uh, usually bite-sized uh, portions, and so it's uh, very creative to make it into a hot dish, Thank something you. unique, and also to marry that with the porchetta, which is something new to me. Uh, it is um, a very creative dish. Um, how did you get the idea to make hot dish with pierogi? Well, I know that there are so many um, hot dishes that are made, and I was like trying to think of something that I was raised on that I really, really loved. And of course, I thought of um, my godmother's pierogies. We're, they're technically not an Italian dish, which is my family background, but I always thought they were Italian. But like you said, they're made individually, and so the labor of them takes all day. We have the pasta and the potato filling, and my godmother used a little cheese, and then she served with a side of sauerkraut. So when I was thinking of a hot dish, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna make pierogi hot dish. And I didn't even check to see if anybody's ever done it in the whole world. So I'm gonna say it's my idea. <laughs> Maybe I should've used a spoon. I was thinking this looked more like a fork. <laughs> There's porchetta and pasta and homemade pasta, and potato, beer cheese, and herbs. Wait a minute, you put the beer in here. I did put okay, the beer in the cheese. <laughs> I know. I only used a quarter a teaspoon of beer. <laughs> Anything special you did to the sauerkraut? Uh, just, I also sourced a nice local crisp um, sauerkraut. If I was making this at home, I probably would make my own sauerkraut and my own porchetta. I like the texture of soft with the crunchy sauerkraut, but I also detect some, not only vinegar, probably from the sauerkraut, but on the top, uh, some citrus in the porchetta, which is really, really nice because to me, it cuts on the fat a little so bit. Glad you but there's another layer of flavor, but I also notice the spices are very unique as well. Can you? Tell us about the spices that go into the porchetta. You know, I think only Iron Rangers can tell you that the only way to describe porchetta is to eat it, but it, it's the porchetta on the Iron Ranges. It's all about the seasonings, and there's fennel and garlic salt and salt and pepper, and it's assertive. And so you really coat it and, and cook it down, and that's why the porchetta has that distinct fennel taste. What an unusual combination of what it looks like uh, pulled pork with all these spices, but it works. And I do, I'm, I'm glad you said that I do like to finish off a, a rich comfort dish with a little citrus, so it's a little lemon juice. Thanks. Thank you very much. Judges, are you ready for the final dish? We are. All right, Anusha. Kanan, please bring your dish. Hi. Hi. Minnesota Madras hot dish. Okay, Anusha and Kanan, can you tell us about your dish, please? Yeah, we uh, we try to use a blend of. Indian foods and spices into this traditional Minnesota hot dish. Uh, we put almost three to four um, layers to this dish. Uh, the first layer is... Uh, the first layer is uh, curry. Curry paste, tomato and onion simmered in some cashew nut, uh, fresh ground cashew nut sauce with coconut going in and a lot of uh, spices, cardamom and uh, stuff like that. So that goes in the base layer. And the second layer, which Kanan worked on is... Yeah. I did the paneer burji, which is um, cottage cheese, which is paneer, and that's scrambled. So that we thought gives it uh, close to the beef consistency. Um, and so we tried to make this without any meat, so there's no meat in this. So we had to recreate it and make it um, feel the same and taste the same a little bit. And then the layer on top of that, the third layer uh, is sauteed veggies. And for that we use Minnesota uh, veggies. We use bell pepper, sweet potato, and butternut squash. Butternut squash. Um, and then um, to uh, have our uh, Indian inspired take on uh, tater tots, 
we added an Indian variant samosa on top of it and we wrapped it all up with uh, mozzarella cheese. And then uh, we made some cranberry, fresh cranberry chutney, which is very Minnesotan, uh, with some Indian spices, again, fenugreek. Uh, we dry roasted some fenugreek and uh, cumin and pound it, hand pound it and added it to the cranberry chutney. So that's, uh, that's the whole uh, wrap up. Yeah. And this evolved over the last few weeks. Um, <laughs> I think we started off with just two, three layers maybe. And uh, we did um, have many of our friends try it out and we took their input. So it's a blend of, uh, blend of, blend, blend of ideas in it. Indian Minnesota. Right, Minnesota. and yeah, specific to Minnesota, Minnesota, we wanted to add as much as possible. This looks beautiful. What is the uh, traditional right. way of eating the, the sauces here on the side? We just wanted to give a sampler because uh, they were all going inside the dish. If you want, in case you wanted to taste the chutneys, how they taste. So, it's so they are already in the dish. Yeah. They're already in this. We idea. thought it would be not fair that it's all mixed together yeah. so that you all can taste what goes in it. Yeah. Great. And I imagine this tastes the best if you just get a big mixed. Right, exactly. Yeah. There's a lot going on. It's kind of <laughs> delicious. <laughs> kind of reminds me of like beans and you can taste the pomegranate and the cranberry right away. Yeah. The curry tastes really good with Thank the cranberry. You. Definitely an explosion of flavors Thank you. that continue to explode in your mouth as you continue to eat. And now I go into the sauces individually and they are wonderful. Thank Amazing. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you just want to send me home with some of this brown Sauce. Just throw some in a jar, I'll take it home. <laughs> Kanan, Anusha, thank you very much. I think it went well. Very well. It went well. We, were, we were happy that uh, we were able to express our dishes and the flavors in the dish. Um, and it was uh, pretty challenging to get things done and you know we had like a few hiccups like trying to figure the oven out and stuff like that um, but overall it was exciting yeah. and we are happy and we are relieved. That right, relieved and done. <laughs> oh, it was so much fun. It was really fun. I, uh, we had plenty of time and I'm excited. I, I, I have no idea who won now. I was pretty confident and now I'm like, hmm, because they are such different hot dishes. But I'm just, I'm just so proud of mine and I'm proud to represent the Iron Range <laughs> with pierogi hot dish. Those judges have like such a huge job. Every dish was different. It was just so many flavors going on. These guys have a big job in front of them. I don't feel sorry. I felt, actually felt sorry for them. But no, they got to taste all the food. Don't feel sorry for them. It'll be fun for them. All right, judges. Did any of you have that just immediate, yep, this is the one? For me, I think, uh, maybe, but I, I think the takes on what they all kind of were, I think they all did such an excellent job. You know, our, I think that our um, thinking, uh, our idea of, of hot dish has changed today because we know that this um, concept is uh, established uh, in this uh, culture, but there is a way to always refresh uh, a dish and this is a uh, a wonderful way to do it. Do you feel like they're all potluck friendly? You know, what's really um, unique about each one of them, not only is that they are potluck friendly, um, but you can build these dishes further. Uh, you can take uh, ingredients out or you can build them uh, into bigger dishes. Uh, but also you can cut the steps uh, in preparation. So rather than uh, needing an hour and a half to make the dish, um, you could actually cut it down to perhaps less than an hour by preparing ingredients ahead of time. Say, you know, if you have the time to do it, 
the day before, you know, just dice your peppers, whatever your dish is going to be, and uh, prepare your pasta or the, the dough that goes in one of the dishes. But certainly, this is a dish that I think people would appreciate in a potluck uh, party or gathering. What strikes me is that this stuff kind of covers all these different cultures that like Minnesota has to offer. Um, I really appreciate uh, the curries. I really love the use of the wild rice. And then porchetta. I learned a lot about porchetta, porchetta <laughs> today from John. I had no idea. It was a whole thing. I knew very, very little about it. Um, but I just really love how all these dishes really do represent like how Minnesota is. and. I think a lot of people would really appreciate this. It also reminds me of how like food culture is becoming bigger and all these different ingredients are more accepted. And I like the idea that we could bring something like this to a potluck in the, on the Iron Range and then also maybe go to Minneapolis. And I think that people would really, really appreciate this food. So. These are very unique creations um, using a combination of uh, local uh, ingredients, uh, the interpretation by group is definitely amazing. This could all be uh, restaurant dishes. It's hard to judge, honestly, because I think they all are such a great representation uh, of what they're supposed to be. Um, I think, you know, you have a classic, maybe, you know, Northern Minnesota dish here, um, which again is part of our culture. But I actually seeing, you know, people that, you know, came to Minnesota, not born and raised here and actually trying to put Minnesota ingredients, like Minnesota fresh ingredients and things that we have and knowing the way we are. And, and some of those twists are just, are both, I mean, very intriguing to me too. So um, again, it's gonna be really hard to choose. Judges, <laughs> final thoughts. I think all three of you groups did incredible coming up with like a hot dish in your creation. Um, for me, there was just one that just was just a little bit, a little bit the extra mile. As a Minnesota girl born and raised, I just like to congratulate all of y'all at making this a, making it this far, and uh, thank you for all of your hard work. Um, just like John said, there's just one that was a little bit above. For me as well. You already won by being here. Thank you for being creative. Thank you for the work you did. Your dishes are all delicious and amazing. And I should say, buena suerte a todos. That is good luck. I know for the judges, and after a lot of discussion and deliberation, um, it's been tough. But based on presentation, creativity, and taste, they have made their decision. And it is our absolute pleasure to announce the winners of the great Minnesota recipe, Kanan and Anusha. We can't, can't even believe, believe what it? happened. <laughs> was We're out of words. <laughs> yeah, it was it was amazing. It was it's pretty humbling. We feel that uh, the judges felt among so many nice dishes that they thought ours was good. Um, so it's it is it is uh, in one word humbling, but we are also very happy. Yeah, th yeah. Thanks to everybody. Uh, we are so happy that our. Uh, marriage or wedding of uh, Indian and Minnesota and recipe went really well with everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I think we owe a lot of uh, thanks to all our friends and, and Minnesotans who gave in all their input and it's a truly um, great dish. Yeah, we will definitely yeah. dedicate this to all our friends and family here who yeah. have been with us. Absolutely. Yeah. Here's the fun part. It's not casserole. 
It's hot, hot dish. dish. <laughs> Casserole is the dish <laughs> that you put the hot dish in. You know, let's break the rule a little. Let's see. Oh, jeez. Right on the money. I just need to, like, you know, always check with the boss if the size is okay. The Holy Trinity is coming together. We just need one more little bit of that, and that would be our celery. When, when it's ready, you just, you know. You can tell. All is right. Really? I can feel it already. You see how I'm not much of a smiler, but now I'm smiling? I'm trying to, like, pretend I'm professional. <laughs> Comfort food. Beautiful it's, comfort food. It's comfort food, yeah. right? It's wonderful. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And we're going in the oven, okay? Oh, it's creamy, smells delicious, and now it's a cooking. Oh, she's a bubbling. She's a bubbling. And that's exactly what we want to see. Season two of The Great Minnesota Recipe is right around the corner. Do you want to be the first to know about casting for our chance to compete? Sign up for our casting call mailing list at WDSE.org now. Funding for The Great Minnesota Recipe is provided by Doherty Appliance Sales and Service, the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund, 